All right, on today's show, we're going to do a little bit of a... Uh, we're going to do a little bit of game that's out here on the internet, man. We're going to look into some things, so... Get up with me, is the kid, Young Kuda, on Player Talk Radio. If you got a question, email me at playertalk8 at gmail.com. That is playertalk8 at gmail.com, or you can DM me on the page that you've seen this is posted on. So, we got some game to break down tonight on Player Talk Radio. First of all, we're going to get into the mix. You know how I do it. Uh, This is part two of uh, the fiasco earlier today. So, we're going to get into today's mix. And we're going to get into the game, man. Fuck with me up close. Kid, y'all. Cool. So, definitely get up with me, man. It's Young Kudo on Player Talk Radio. We're going to get into the mix and get into today's game. We got two segments today that we're going to break down. Player Talk Radio. Datpiff.com world premiere. I never want a big homies used to shit on me. Pull up in that motherfucker with a sticks, homies. Cash falling on my pants cause the sticks on me. Pay me the repelling cause this nigga bitch on me. Remember when I got OG by the OGs. Nigga, you can stop acting like you know me. If I fuck a nigga bitch, I'ma do it low key. I'm checking the mail, a weighing the scale, a buying the bail. Smoking on dope to my mind is down. A nigga like me gon' find it well. Jeans like this, you gon' find in Paris. Me and Cash got some kind of marriage. I got too many diamond pennies. All this ice I'm diving in it. Burn no truck, I'm riding in it. Me and Gang, I'm sliding in it. Every's all in my dinner. Wrist got big diamonds in it. Shades got them M's on them. Pockets got them bands on them. 40 got a fan on them. Account shop with bands on them. six bands for this Fanny, I get jiggy, I get jiggy. Oh, this two, two, three, I don't trust you, y'all look if Got hundred in this chop since just two, y'all get fifty Drink chasing like me, money riding with a fifty, y'all be your city I remember when the big homies used to shit on me Pull up in that motherfucker, what the sticks, homies Cash falling on my pants, cause the sticks on me Pay me the repelling, cause this nigga bitch on me Remember when I got OG by the OGs Nigga, you can stop acting like you know me If I fuck a nigga, bitch, I'ma do it low-key Putting out big bucks cause I'm so true Let's go Secure us, you may start the conversation now Yeah Nah Yes, sir. I know. I was. I don't lie. I don't lie. I think you caught me when I was asleep. I think you caught me when I was asleep. Yeah. Slick, I'm trying to get 20 bathrooms. Need a beach house down in Cancun. I got a view of the stars and the moon. All this marble on the ground, grab a broom Outside, white, red seats in the cool Cameras all around it, I can see what you do 24 is on it, I can ride through the snow Cops on my ass, now I'm riding real slow Got one cousin missing, all he know is sell dope He don't even care about the torn and the shells He don't even wanna fuck the bitches in the hoe Every time I visit, he in the kitchen with the stove Shoulder 
slide on Facebook that I wanted to read. Okay, so at Brown and Bella on Instagram.com at Brown and Bella all one word Brown and Bella she said, sure our fathers and grandfathers were slash are largely misogynistic assholes but they aren't it said, but they weren't misogynistic assholes as, all right. She says, sure, our fathers and grandfathers were slash are largely misogynistic assholes, but they weren't misogynistic assholes asking for half the rent. Basically implying that as a nigga now, you're not a real man for asking a woman for paying half the rent. Bitch. Okay. <laughs> like the cost of living ain't up, but okay. Like... Like, like, like some bras didn't have a job before they met you. Okay. But see, people, they, they get wrapped up in this shit like this. Let's, let's see what case she makes. Okay, so. Oh, no. Okay, we good. She goes on to say, because today, lots of men have the same labor expectations for women as men back in the day. But none of, but none of their sense of responsibility. Now. This is a byproduct of men that were raised by women. 
You understand that? A lot of people will have a problem with what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is what a real man should say. And it's basically saying the same thing, but y'all just too wrapped up on trying to say what y'all want to say and don't really know why y'all saying what y'all saying. You're just regurgitating. But let's keep going. She goes further on to say, my own dad is a patriarch. Like I told you guys, don't trust women like this because they they flip on you. They use words that they don't even realize what the hell each word means or what's going on with that word. She says, my own dad is a patriarch. All the shit on Twitter that men say about child care, making plates, cooking, and etc., etc., he really believes it. Not even kidding. He bought me crock pots for our housewarming and said, you, me- uh, you make sure you feed that man hot meals. I digress. Hold on. Let me... Hold on. And then she further on goes to say, but you see, he holds up his end. He wanted a submissive wife in the Christian tradition. My mama ain't worked since she married him. Okay, so she's talking about her dad. Alright, let's go in some more. They own two homes um, and multiple cars and he works more and he works more than anyone I know to keep it that way so I can respect it. You new niggas want all the rights he has but none none of the responsibility and that's what I that's why I don't respect you because it doesn't work that way. Whenever my pops leaves this earth, my mama will be fine. His children will be fine because that's what being a man meant to him. Ete brute. I guess that was French. Okay. First of all, Shorty, you're comparing you see, this sounds smart, but this is dumb. Shorty. You are comparing the men that you date today to give you to give you value and things that your dad has. You're comparing them to your dad, which is in a whole different tax bracket, which jobs that were around in his time were available then that are not available now or don't pay the same. You're comparing niggas now that are in their 20s and maybe 30s to what your dad has maybe in his 60s and 50s. Right here and then, you've proved that you are stupid. And you've proved that you have no sense of time or understand how the real world works. Therefore, letting me know that you are dumb. Easily. Dumb. Dumb. And this is funny because you really think this have this th- that th- what that what you're saying has gripe over the type of guys that you meet and date. Stupid. Just dumb. I didn't even have to even have no effort. I could just dumb right out the gate. And a lot of you girls agree to this shit. But let's keep going. She says. Whenever my pops leave this earth, my mama will be fine. His children will be fine. Because that's what being a man meant to him. Et tu brute. Which is French. She says, their life is not for me. But at least I understand the trade-off on each side. I don't understand how some of you today have the nerve. Put women through a ton of bullshit and for what? What does she get in the end? Nothing. Not a goddamn thing. But dick and heartache. Okay. This is a woman that clearly... She she knows she's bullshitting herself. Don't make the mistake to think that this is every woman. This is bullshit. So then she says... Put women through a ton of bullshit for what? What does she get in the end? Nothing. Which a lot of women are getting rings, cars, food, money, all kinds of shit for free. Like I said in my last broadcast, being pretty is important for women. But let's keep going. Tia Ria said at uh, at Brown and Bella, this thread is the word. Okay, cool. She says, while you romanticized women in the past, guess what, buddy? Women in the past wouldn't look twice at your ass, wouldn't look once, to be honest. We're just spewing a lot of hatred. Which a lot of people say I'm guilty of. Which I'm really not. I'm just telling y'all the truth. Which is why I haven't been debated. 
What is this? Okay. Which is why I haven't been debated at all. But anywho. She said, marinate on that one, champ. Thinking she's telling guys something. So, that was the end of that thread. Ain't that funny? Um, I also uh, tell you guys the importance of having a conversation. Um, I wanted to go over this thing again. I don't know if I did it, but let's, let's go over it real quick. This is the 36th question that hacks a woman's mind and make her love you scientifically proven. We're going to go through this list. And um, I'm going to kind of tell you uh, what it is, what game to pull out of what they're saying and what game not to, if it's good or bad. And um, this is going to um, give you all some game. So let's go through it. <clears throat> 36 questions that hack a woman's mind. Shout out to Trip Advice for this. So let's, let's see what they say and let's see what we can use. Come on. Um, and today I have a really special video where I'm going to tell you the 36 questions that make a woman fall in love with you. Now, before I get to those questions, I want to tell you what this is all about. Recently, a scientific study was done on closeness between two people, and the subjects were given a series of close questions and small talk questions. All right, let's see what and he's talking about. They found out that after asking each other and answering the close questions, that it made two people have increased feelings for each other. After the study was completed, two of the subjects even got married. With this study, they made the questions get increasingly deeper and deeper, so you really get to know a person. But here's the interesting part. It's not just about hearing someone else's deepest thoughts that make you attractive. It's also the fact that you are sharing your answers and life story with them. The which whole I act told of you guys to do, story which is pretty good. shares a profound Be role honest. in how close you feel with someone else. So again, the whole idea here is you both have to answer these questions together and as honestly as possible. Now before I tell you the 36 questions, you must know that in order to do this, a woman has to be interested in doing it with you. You can get courageous and try this out on a date or if you're daring enough, find a girl at a party who would do this experiment with you. Tell them what it's all about. And at the end of the question answer session, you have to stare into each other's eyes for four straight minutes. So try these out, be bold, and see what happens. And if you don't want to try this experiment with a girl, then at the very least, pick out some of the questions to use when you first approach a girl, or use some of these questions on a date to get to know a girl better. These questions are gold. So here they are, starting with number one all the way to number 36. Number one. Given the choice of anyone in the world, whom would you want as a dinner guest? Number two, would you like to be famous? Now, number one is a good question because you can see if she knows how to cook. This is a slick way of finding out if she knows how to cook. This is a slick way of uh, finding out who she values. You know, who would she invite to her house to cook for her? So that's a pretty cool thing. Um, also, yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a pretty good question. That's a really great question. But you have to learn how to set your conversation up before you spring that on a woman. So, let's go. In what way? Number three, before making a telephone call, do you ever rehearse what you're gonna say and why? Number four, what would you constitute a perfect day for you? And that's good. That's another good uh, question to ask, you know. You know, you'll see what, what, what she values, what she would do in a day off. So that's pretty good. Number five, when did you last sing to yourself or to someone else? Number that's six, if you were able to live to the age of 90 and retain either the mind or body of a 30-year-old or the last 60 years of your life, which would you want? Now, that's a question that you have to recite and you have to spring it on her when you guys are cuddling or something. But I don't advise you guys to ever ask her that question at all. A lot of you guys wouldn't even know what to do with their answer. So, let's go. Number seven, do you have a secret hunch about how you will die? Number eight, name three things you... Don't ever ask a woman a question about life or death or politics if you don't know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. Don't ever ask her a question about life and death. It scares a lot of people because that's something that's always in the back of your head. Your partner appeared to have in common. Number nine, for what in your life do you feel most grateful? 
Number 10, if you could change anything about the way you were raised, what would it be? Number 11, take four minutes and tell your partner your life story. That's a good question. That's a good question. How you were raised, that's a good question. You wanna ask her that when um, you get to the comfort stage. I tell you guys, uh, when you get to the comfort stage of women, that's a good question to ask. In as much detail as possible. Number 12, if you could wake up tomorrow having gained any one quality or ability, what would it be? Okay, that was set number one. Now we're going to the second set of questions, which are gonna get a little bit deeper. Number 13, if a crystal ball could tell you the truth about yourself, your life, the future, or anything else, what would you want to know? Number 14, is there something that you've dreamed of doing for a long time? Why haven't you done it? Number 15, what is the greatest accomplishment of your life? Number 16, what do you value most in a friendship? Both of those questions are good. Her accomplishment, what is the best thing that she thinks that, and a lot of times too, uh, um, a lot of times too, her accomplishment might not be something big. It might be big to her, but it's not big to you in a lot of cases. So, you know, you have to be uh, cautious when she answers that. Um, what does she value a friend in a friendship? That's another good question because that gives you the answer of what does she value in a partnership? What does she value in her significant other? And a lot of times, too, women don't really have a clear answer for things like this. They just regurgitate, you know, what they've heard. So just keeping it 100 with you. Number 17, what is your most treasured memory? Number 18, That's a, what is okay your most one. terrible memory? That's Number okay 19, one. if you knew that in one year you would die suddenly, would you change anything about the way you are now living? Don't ask her that question at all. That's not a good question to ask her and why. Number 20, what does friendship mean to you? Number 21, what roles do love and affection play in your life? Number 22, alternate sharing something you consider a positive characteristic of your partner and share a total of five items. Don't ask her that. Number 23, how close and warm is your family? Do you feel your childhood was happier than most other people's? Number 24, how do you feel about the relationship with your mother? That's an okay question, but you gotta pose it different. Be like, so what would you say the relationship in your mom is like? That's how you wanna ask that, you know? And you wanna ask her that at like dinner and stuff, you know, or when she just gets off the phone with her mother. You wanna set your questions to be more realistic in the atmosphere, you know, be like, hey man, you and your mom talk a lot, that's cool. You know, what is the relationship between you and your mom? You know, you can, you can always ask that. So that's a good question. Hey, we're getting even deeper now. We're about to enter the last set, the third set of questions that are gonna complete the 36 questions. Here we go. 25, make three true we statements. For instance, we are both in this room feeling. That's a stupid question. Don't ask that and that'll come off as creepy. 26, complete this sentence. I wish I had someone with whom I could share. That's an okay question. Ask that when you're in a in a nice, good conversation. 27, if you're going to become a close friend with your partner, please share what would be important for him or her to know. 20 You've asked that question, you just posed it differently. So don't, don't ask that. 28, tell your partner what you like about them. Be very honest this time, saying things that you might not say to someone you just met. Don't ask that question because a lot of these questions you want to ask, but a lot of them you don't want to ask because it sounds scripted. So, uh, 29. 29, share with your partner an embarrassing moment in your life. Well, how you got to ask that question is like, we could probably tell a story about a slightly embarrassing moment in your life, but it demonstrates a lot of character and a lot of value because how you tell it. Like I tell you guys to go get books on storytelling. A really good book is uh, The Power of Storytelling by, what's his name? Let's check. The Power of Storytelling by Jim Holt, Holjit. I don't know what the fuck. J-I-M-H-O-L-T-J-E. Really good, really good book. Really great book. I, I got it right here in my office. I'm looking at it right now. Really great book. Y'all should go get that. Oh shit! Now I'm dropping shit off my desk, uh, my speaker desk. Uh, y'all should y'all should go get that. 
All right, come on. 30, when did you... And then, and then once you tell the story, you, you ask her about her story. You see what I'm saying? Ask cry in front of another person or by yourself. Don't ask her that. 31, tell your partner something that you like about them already. You 32, can, you, what if anything is too serious to be joked about? You can say that and just but make it a statement. About. Number 33, if you were to die this evening with no opportunity to communicate with anyone, what would you most regret not having told someone? That's creepy. Do not ask her that. And why haven't you told them yet? Number 34. Your house, containing everything you own, catches fire. After saving your loved ones, your pets, you have time to safely make a final dash to save one item. That's, that's to see if she's materialistic. Another great question you can ask her is, describe to me your dream house. I love that one. That's a really great question. You kind of see the things she values. Come on. What would it be and why? Number 35, of all the people in your family, whose death would you find most disturbing and why? Number 36, share a personal problem and ask your partner's advice on how he or she might handle it. Also, ask your partner to reflect back to how you seem to be feeling about the problem you have chosen. Don't ask her that shit. Don't. So there you go. Don't. I'm going to post these below in the description for you. And as a gift, I'm going to be giving you my magnetic conversation course. All right. So, yeah, that was a, that was a nice little uh, uh, list. Half that shit don't ask. But the ones that I that I tell you to, man, go back through this and uh, definitely um, add it and, and uh, get the game that I was saying, you know, to ask. So listen, man. I am about to get up out the building. It's been a blast kicking it with y'all on an, on this Sunday. But I got shit to do, man. So um, I'll check in with y'all. Um, catch me on the digital paw. Uh, I said digital. Paw. <laughs> the digital pit boss effect or the digital pit boss channel, man. I hope you guys subscribe to both of them channels, man. Me and Black Ink gonna be doing some cool shit uh, this week. So definitely check me out on there and uh, don't wait up, man. Thursday show is on the way. Thursday show. I might do a show in between if somebody fucks up or do some wild shit. So listen, man. Fuck with me. It's the kid, young Cooter. And um, just just get out with me. It's the kid, young Cooter, man. Listen, man. If you got any questions, email me at playertalk8 at gmail.com. That is playertalk8 at gmail.com. Definitely like, subscribe, and share this podcast. Share this podcast. Fellas, you need this game. Do not hide it from motherfuckers. Share it. Share it. Shit. All right. It's the kid, Young Kuda, man. I am out, man. Peace out. And enjoy your Sunday. Actually, let's get into the mix, man. Let's get into the mix, man. Enjoy your Sunday. It's the kid, Young Kuda. Let's go. Pardon, you doubted me. You knew I would do this. My money's so foolish. I'm laughing and cruising, finessing the music. Now, part of me. It's back to the honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pardon me. Yeah, yeah. I can't pardon you, doubted me. You knew I would do this. My money's so foolish. I'm laughing and cruising, finessing the music. Now, part of me. It's back to the honest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to that boy, OG Mako. I told them long before critics. I told them long before groupies and pictures. My vision amazing, mosaic. Put the pieces together, to assemble my future. I'm just a simple little hustle. I watch these niggas be blind to the facts. I made these youngest the monsters. The chopper got ammo, put parts on your scalp. I was the run running best on the map. Black on black, max trap in my lap. Back on old that, smash up the flat. All but now, what we remain to cap. How long is forever? We went into that. Oh, that's a Beretta, a carbon and back. I did it better, bitch, part of my dad. My fingers can hurt from counting this cash. Part of can't part of you doubted me. You knew I would do this, my money so foolish. I'm laughing and cruising, finessing the music, not part of me. It's back to the illness. Yeah, yeah. I can't part of you doubting me. You knew I would do this. My money so foolish. I'm laughing and cruising, finessing the music. I'm part of me. It's back to the honest.
It's about to be used. Yeah.